Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the fluoroscopic esophagram. This sort of study is done to evaluate reflux, aspiration, dysphagia sort of symptoms. Um, you're looking for like mucosal lesions, uh, uh, reasons the patient may have some sort of dysmotility, and um, we'll kind of go through kind of the major considerations um, of, of how to perform this. For like, like a lot of fluoroscopic exams, the best way to learn is actually in the room. So here we're just going to only be able to touch on big picture sort of things and kind of talk about considerations rather than necessarily technique when you're uh, operating the floor, um, the actual floor machine. Okay, so in terms of big picture approach, like with any other, any sort of study, you want to understand what's going on with the patient, um, what brings them to the study, any underlying abnormalities, any prior, especially any prior cross-sectional imaging um, that evaluates the same anatomy. That can give you a sense as to any underlying anatomic variations or prior surgeries, anything that can help you understand what you're seeing eventually on a fluoroscopic study. Um, if the patient has previously had fluoroscopic exams, you want to look at those closely. And there's certain comorbidities, such as underlying malignancy, HIV, such, you know, uh, immunocompromised in any sort of way that can help you understand um, what's, you know, what uh, help you sort out the differential if you see actual abnormality on the study. Okay, so Big picture, we're gonna you know talk a little bit about about um, how you choose the contrast, and a little bit we'll talk a little about the technique in performing the exam, uh, and then what what you're looking for when you ultimately review the images. So here is um, you know some images taken taken during a fluoroscopic esophagram. This is a double contrast exam, um, and that's kind of an important consideration before you actually perform the study. So. As you review the study, you walk, you know, um, and, and get a sense uh, as to what's going on with the patient. Um, you're going to want to choose a single conscious exam. Um, uh, if the patient has some sort of surgery in the region of the gastroesophageal junction, such as a fundoplication, um, you know, patients who are at higher risk for reflux or aspiration or who would do very poorly even with a small amount of uh, uh, aspiration, you know, uh, such as poor respiratory status. These are the reasons to also choose single conscious exam. Um, most patients otherwise will tolerate the double contrast. So double contrast is done in such a way that the contrast is mixed with these effervescent granules that kind of create these air bubbles. So you have a contrast between um, you know, uh, you know the, the the kind of radiopaque material, whether it be barium or some sort of ionated, you know, um, contrast, and the air that will be inside the lumen. Um, if uh, if you know when when we do these kind of double contrast studies, the, the contrast between the air and um, the kind of high density material allows you to better evaluate the mucosa. So that's kind of the advantage there. All right. So in terms of major considerations, before we even go through and evaluate the images about how to perform the sort of study, things you want to think about is that initially you want to have images, or at least at some point during during the study, you, you can see kind of the result of this process here is that usually with a patient standing in an LAO position, um, you want active swallowing. You want to see uh, the cervical esophagus, um, you know, I, I think here we only have, you know, um, you know a, a couple saved images. But in real-time evaluation, you do want to see ideally the cervical esophagus on the lateral and the AP projections. Um, sometimes patients will have these sort of symptoms and we're thinking they're kind of lower down the esophagus, but the upper esophagus may actually be the area of abnormality. So that can help you make sure that you're evaluating that as well. Um, and then you're going to, you know, as you know, in real time, you'll you'll follow the images down, and you'll 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 you'll, you'll, you'll I mean, you'll follow the contrast down to the GE junction and watch it pass through to see if there's any hold up of contrast or any abnormality. Um, you may uh, want to go through and do this not just in kind of an oblique projection, but in a frontal projection for patients who have had a prior surgery. Um, a lot of times with um, let's see, in, in in the next step, you want you want to think about getting a images in kind of a prone position. So initially we're starting, you know, standing, we'll get the patient prone, um, kind of like a prone, prone RPO. So like a, a like a, you know, right, uh, like a right posterior oblique. So they're going to be a little bit angled relative to gravity and, and the table. Um, and you'll have them actively swallowing. And, and when you do that, you're going to get um, 
images of peristalsis. Um, so you'll do like typically one sip and swallow, and then look, and then you'll look continuously. And these are kind of the resultant images where you follow the um, contrast, you know, along the mucosa down. Um, and then in real time, you're going to look for any abnormalities of peristalsis. You know, I'm looking for like primary, secondary, and tertiary or, or, or contractions. Um, when, when, the, when, the, when the contrast reaches the region of the um, gastroesophageal junction, you also want, you know, this is on, on, ultimately on real time and then and saving images, is that you want them to perform something like a valsalva maneuver so that you can look for a hiatal hernia and see if the, 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 the junction goes up or if there's any Schatzky's rings. Um, and, and, you know, especially in the setting of reflux, but freak, you know, even routinely, you can have the patient from that kind of, pro, you know, prone oblique position, you know, uh, roll over so that they are uh, in, in kind of supine position. And then from there, have them do provocative maneuvers that would produce reflux, things like a valsalva maneuver, leg lift or churning, you know, uh, you know, to the left and right lateral decubitus positions, that that will help you see reflux of contrast that's already passed into the stomach back up into the esophagus, and that will help you get a sense as to whether there are, there's an issue with reflux. Um, there are some cases where um, you'll you want to see the passage of like a barium tablet to see if the patient's motility is able to pass that through the esophagus. If you are to do that. Um, and to look for any holes up, you want to do that in the standing position. Um, and so ultimately, at the end of the, you know, once the procedure, you know, once you're once you're done uh, getting all the images, you end up having a series of uh, images of the, you know, whole es you know, esophagus, as you see here. Things you want to think about as you're going through, and these are things to keep in mind, even as we're looking at uh, the study real time, is to look at the course of the esophagus. You're looking for extrinsic compression. You're looking for diverticula, uh, abnormal dilatation or narrowing. Um, you know, at the GE junction, you'll look for hiatal hernia, especially, you know, and sometimes these can be more apparent with uh, those provocative maneuvers. You're looking along the mucosa. Um, you're looking for, you know, ulcers, for irregularity, um, for like a shaggy appearance. Um, if there are filling defects, you know, sometimes you will see um, that there are foreign bodies or mass lesions, you know, those, the Schatzky's rings, you know, uh, close to the GE junction. And then more so real time, but also as you're reviewing the images, you want to think about are there um, kind of... Uh, normal contractions of the esophagus does is the con is there you know if there are any sort of these findings intralumerally or of the mucosa is there hold up of contrast um and this can you know and then you're also considering this as you go through and and look at the um you know if, if, if you're trying to get a, a tablet to pass through um you know as as you're looking through and 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 seeing the contrast go down, does contrast leave the lumen of the esophagus anywhere, you know, in terms of if there's a fistula or a perforation? And, and, and in cases where it's post-surgical, um, you want to look closely at the surgical site. And in cases where there's trauma or in cases where there's a there's concern for focal abnormality, you want to look very carefully there. It's, you know, it's important to note that we are going to see a lot of other structures also. So as you're going through and you've done a close look at the lumen, the the mucosa, and just adjacent to the esophagus, at the end you want to make sure that that especially if this is like a study we're doing in isolation or it's you know a patient's been transferred from another institution, you don't have prior imaging, just to give an eyeball of the other structures and make sure that there is. Um, you know, nothing else you're seeing, whether in the aerodigestive tract or the incidentally imaged uh, other osseous um, thoracic structures. Okay, so as a quick recap, um, the fluoroscopic esophagram is done for a number of reasons. Um, and the kind of a major important early thing is to figure out whether you want single or double contrast. You definitely do not want to um, give a double contrast study to a patient who has uh, any risk for perforation or will ha do poorly even with a little bit of aspiration or who have at risk for aspiration. And then we'll go through to do the study, which is best learned, you know, real time uh, with an expert teaching you. But, you know, we touched on a couple key considerations of watching that contrast throughout the course of the both the cervical and then the kind of thoracic esophagus down to GE junction, looking for a holdup. Um, both, and then we're, you know, reviewing the images and looking for that normal course and caliber we're looking, f assessing the mucosa for filling defects, for abnormal contrast, you know, hold up or passage as along with the normal contractions.
and then at the end we'll look for any uh, you know uncommon or rare incidentals that are, that we do see.